It's a cup of bisque. These are the jokes, people. So I think this week is going to be a little bit weird on Random Review as I have a few very strange things to talk about. But to kind of ease our way into that, we're going to start with something that is still familiar but definitely quite odd in its own special way. From Transformers R.I.D. 2015, we are looking at the Decepticon Bisque. From the Warrior Class size range, this is the actual transforming one, which I have not been able to find anywhere in my area and my usual shops are not carrying it. I had to find this one at ToysRust.com. But still, hey, I finally have it, so we can talk about it now. He is cast in a slightly metallic orange plastic that really works for the outside of a car. It definitely has a very nice shine to it, very nice color. And wow, wow, I love this car. I'm not a car guy. I love this car. It's very, it's very, uh, very, like very, uh, concept car looking with a bunch of really tall, very tall arches and lines, very deep curves. I love the curvature of this too. And I'm sure someone in the comments will direct me to a car that actually does somehow look like this. And hey, I might actually be interested in seeing that because this is a freaking cool design and I'm all for it. So I do it. I'm, I'm already into this. I'm already into this. We do have some black paint going across for the windshield. So very heavily tinted and also toward the back. Doesn't quite look like a back windshield, but hey, we'll give it its due. It's also here in the front where it uh, should be a grill, but apparently not. We also have some maroon paint going into little grooves around here and then the spoiler, which doesn't look like it would do much to catch wind and give you some downforce, but hey, it kind of looks cool, so we'll give it some credit for now. We also have a little bit of silver as well as nice shiny blue for the headlights. I'm actually surprised they went through the, top, the effort to actually give you those tiny little details. It's not something I normally expect out of the R.I.D. figures. Also... There is a blank spot where there should be a ornament on the front of the car, and it's clearly a spot for a tiny Decepticon symbol that was not applied. I don't know why. Beyond that, strangely enough, a light, light blue, same metallic blue as the headlights, trim on all of the wheels. I did not expect that. It's, it's a very strange and random detail, but I don't know, I kind of like it. So, detail-wise... Really, really, really nice. I'm very happy with how this vehicle mode comes together. It looks exceptional. Speaking of come together, unfortunately, mine does not seem to want to close up on this side. The peg is not quite tight enough, or whatever's inside of here is not scrunching together far enough for me to make a solid connection. It feels like I'm bending plastic in order to try and get it pegged in. That's unfortunate. Also unfortunate is I'm pretty sure, even though... If, even if there's a real car that looks like this, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have these four gaps just above each of the wheels. This is strange. I thought for a while that it was, I don't know, some kind of gap to, you know, say, uh, either save on plastic, but it's a really strange spot for it. I thought it might be to give the wheels more clearance, but it doesn't seem like it does. It's bizarre. I'm not quite sure what they were going for here. It's just four ugly gaps in the top of what is otherwise a very, very beautiful vehicle mode. Oh, and we also do have a pair of guns that we can mount in an interesting location here, right on the front, just above the headlights. This is very James Bond-esque. Well, he's just kind of flipped out and started gunning down things on the highway. I kind of like it. I kind of dig it. I, I prefer this rather than Hey, it's right in the middle of the windshield so no one can see out of you anymore. Or it's right on top of the car where it looks absolutely silly. This actually kind of makes sense a little bit. And it helps that those are actually uh, reused in robot mode, which we should go ahead and get to. We're going to start by unpegging these sections, which is a really clever way of getting uh, his lobster claw look going. After that, I'm going to unpeg these sections so we can grab hold of the hood bring it up like that get uh, this part separated 
like so. That out of the way. Also going to undo the top. This pegs in really tight. But hey, solid pegging is pretty good on a transformer, so it's not a complaint. All right, we fold all of this out. Close it back down. Flip the feet out, and that gives us our legs. Now from here, we have to get uh, the head folded out while we are still halfway transforming the arms because there's not enough clearance to do it otherwise. The arms come down, they'll find a nice little spot to rest, and that chest pegs in like so. Armor goes to the sides of the arms like so on the ball joints. Yep, connect up the arms. Rotate around so we have the elbows facing forward. And with that, we have Bisque in his full robot mode. Talk about unique. Talk about weird. Like, R.I.D., you, you come and uh, you, you come out with things like this. And you, you, I have to give you credit because I didn't think of that as a transforming robot at one time. No, uh, no Clawful from Masters of the Universe did not really peak my radar as a possible transformer design. Now, taking a look at the head, and that's a head. Who that's a head. Bisque is extremely creepy looking, very, very lobster-like with the floating eye stalks and the long antenna, the big whisker things hanging off the chin. The silver face is a little bit strange. It's a little bit eye it's a little bit distracting because I'm expecting a mouth to be there. Even though his mouth is sculpted in, it's extremely tiny and unpainted. And even if it would have been inaccurate, I wish it had been painted to bring out the detail of the teeth and give me a look of that like signature grimace that he has in the show. I, I, I know, I'm losing that detail a little bit in the orange plastic, and that's unfortunate because it really would have made a nice detail to see. Other than that, though does have this very creepy look to him. His natural stance is a little bit hunched over so his head can face forward, which also gives him a bit of a creepier appearance, you know, a little bit uh, a little bit quasi-moto, as it were. But it kind of works for him, too. So in this mode, we do, of course, see a bunch more of uh, maroon plastic has joined the mix. Again, just like the orange, it is slightly metallic and gives you a nice little shine in the light gives it a proper robotic look. We have plenty of added black with what seems to be a fake windshield here across the front of his chest. There's the poker sim symbol Decepticon logo, as we're used to at this point. Black around the pelvis piece, and then we can see the details on the rear of the vehicle. Makes for very nice detailing on the legs that I can work with. And of course, his car mode details carry over onto his big lobster claws it's a good even color balance here i don't see anything that's really missing uh any actual detail everything seems to be quite broken up the way it needs to be broken up the one part that is a little bit devoid of paint are his giant claws and i think that's actually uh to their benefit and of course they do have the tire breaking up a little bit as well i really like how the transformation includes an element that actually makes these claws work. That's actually really clever and cool. The transformation itself, quite enjoyable on this guy. So yeah, he actually works pretty good as far as detail and composition. He looks like a really good, like, like <laughs> he looks like I would expect a robotic lobster man to look, strangely enough. So articulation, well, his head is actually soft plastic all the way through so you kind of have to grab him by the face in order to rotate him around you want to get creepier he's just crook his head like that now you're getting really creepy with the poses but that gives him a lot of character too which is really good on these toys uh he has those strange shoulders where it's a hinge and then a swivel and it should be universal range but it's not quite you need the bicep swivel which is included in order to get that which is kind of weird you still get plenty of poses out of him though 90 degree elbow, and of course his claws do pinch up and down pretty well. See, nothing at the waist, but fully working ball joints in the hips. Thigh swivel is there as well, quite tight on mine actually. 
and then a knee bend as well and a rock of the ankle back and forth plenty of motion plenty of range on this guy and so many ways of giving his opponents the clamps i love it it's actually really characterful I like I, I just I like how I like how everything gets kind of lends itself to that hunched over look. It's it's very unique. So we can go ahead and include his guns back on him. I'm actually kind of happy that he came with like twin pistol weapons. Not only does it work better in vehicle mode, in my opinion, it also kind of gives him a little bit more to do in robot mode. I like uh, I like twin pistol characters, twin guns in general. It's a little bit more characterful, a little bit more interesting than just, you know, simply a, a rifle or a sword. It's a little bit different. And that's Bisque in a nutshell, man. He's a little bit different. So that, my friends, is Transformers R.I.D. 2015 Warrior Class Bisque. Definitely an oddball, but in very, very good ways. The vehicle mode, very strong, very nice looking. Uh, his transformation has plenty of clever elements to it, including what I didn't even mention, little spots where those soft plastic bits on his head aren't really going to get marred up or bent out of shape. It's actually designed to protect that. And then, of course, the robot mode. G -g -g yeah, it's about what I could expect out of a lobster robot man. Uh, it's definitely different. It's definitely unique. You know, and these kind of... R.I.D. Decepticons aren't for everybody, but if they're your thing, this is one that is done exceptionally well.